Good morning, Scott Davis from TechWise Group. It is April 20th, 2020. Today happens to be my wedding anniversary, so it is a very special day to me because uh, it is the day that I got to say I do and for my wife and I to know that we're spending the rest of our lives together. So it is a significant day for me. It's also a significant day for millions around the world as 420 has a double meaning. Um, but into the technology news, uh, Cognizant IT, it's a IT service provider. Um, they've been breached with ransomware. Uh, Cognizant, Cognizant IT is a worldwide serv service provider, customers everywhere. Um, and what's important to note with the Maze ransomware uh, is Maze ransomware and the group behind it is known to release data when ransoms aren't paid. So the whole process, you know, typically looks like, you know, you get the phishing email, the phishing email, you know, injects, you know, the virus into your network. The ransomware virus uh, is, goes through the process of, you know, searching your system and all your attached network drives for certain data tags, exporting that data, and then once it's done exporting all of that, it then goes through the process of, you know, locking all your files and, you know, asking for the ransom. <coughs> The Maze Group takes it a little bit further that if you don't pay the ransom, they're actually coming back publicly and saying, we have your data. If you don't pay us this, we're going to release it. Uh, I talked a little bit about this last week uh, with a number of companies that had a third party that was breached that um, ultimately saw data that was being released. Um, it's also important to note that this is the second IT service vendor in the span of a week that has come up on our list of breaches. Um, you may recall from last, I think Thursday, AST Corporation announced a breach that they had emails uh, that were being sent to a third party with employee W-2s. Uh, so it's critical as an IT vendor, as an IT service provider that we protect our house. If we're not protecting our house, the whole industry is going to lose trust uh, from the business community. So it's critical that we take security seriously, we protect our house, and we train our employees. Um, outside of the IT community, Webkins. Uh, Webkins is a gaming site, uh, I think mostly in the Canada area. Uh, but they were breached 23 million username and passwords. It is worldwide. Um, this was an SQL injection vulnerability. So it typically comes down to a system somewhere wasn't patched and a vulnerability existed. Um, just across the line, we have to ensure we're patching our systems, updating firmware, you know, going through those lines. Uh, going into COVID-19, FTC is reporting over 20,000 fraud reports uh, as of April 16th. Uh, that is ginormous. Uh, that's email, that's cell phones, that's text messages. Um, just there's money to be made because everyone is looking for information. Uh, everyone's trying to figure out what's next, when this ends, when this happens. Um, so there's just so much fraud going on right now as a whole with coronavirus and COVID-19. Everyone from, you know, the consumer at home to you know, the enterprise business to the government agencies, be cautious of any email you receive, any text message you receive, any phone call you receive on anything coronavirus COVID-19. Just take a minute, say thank you, and go directly to the source. Go to CNN.com, go to MSNBC.com, go to FoxNews.com, get your information from you know your trusted news. In addition, Google spotted over 18 million phishing emails last week, last week alone on coronavirus COVID-19. Uh, last week I mentioned, I think it was a 148% increase in phishing emails, uh, ransomware attacks, um, just, you know, looking March to into, or February into March. <coughs> the trend is continuing. The trend is growing. The trend is getting ridiculous. The emails are coming because the emails are proving to be effective. Your end user education has to be stepped up. If you do not have an end user education platform in place today, email me, scott at techwisegroup.com. We're going to get you set up with something. Um, you know, we'll talk about it. I'll give you what your options are, but you got to do something. You got to get education in front of your, in front of your, uh, your end users. 
Uh, the last topic that I want to cover today goes back to the Lincoln Financial Advisors. Uh, so on Friday, I mentioned Lincoln Financial Advisors had a data breach, um, and that came down to a hard drive that was stolen. Um, it could have been a laptop that was left in someone's car was stolen out of the car. It could have been X, Y, Z. Uh, but a hard drive was stolen with client data on it, including, you know, driver's license, socials, you know, all the PII that you need really to cause issues. Well, they reported this breach last week, but doing some digging around, I found three additional breaches um, since 2010. In 2010, there was 1.2 million accounts that were breached. Uh, this was done by a shared username and password. Uh, what a shared username and password is, is a username and password that's shared typically among the IT department or different departments. So instead of S. Davis being just me and I'm the only person that uses it to log in, it could be Scott's Tech News and it's a shared username that everybody associated with the Tech News broadcast that I put out each day logs in that way. We should not be using shared username and passwords for anything. If you're using shared username and passwords, it's time to stop the trend. They are only causing issues. They only will cause trouble down the road. In 2011, uh, 91,000 uh, breached uh, from a database programming error. Uh, in 2012, another 5,400 customers uh, records were breached. So there's a pattern here. And I think that is what bothers me the most, um, you know, if I work with a company that got ransomware, and many, many companies come uh, to TechWise Group looking for answers after you know a breach or after ransomware comes into their system because they understand that they're not secure in the state they're in, and ultimately you lose faith in who's protecting you. Um, so when you come, you know, to TechWise Group, for example, you know we do a full analysis, you know, with you, you know, we're looking at your, the health of your office 365 cloud. You're, we're looking at what, where your data is stored. We're looking at your local system. You know, we're looking at the big picture and we're trying to give you the information to make the right decisions on what services, what tools, what you need to put into place to protect yourself. Um, just looking at Lincoln Financial Advisors, uh, Lincoln Financial Group, um, you know, between 2010 and 2012, they paid fines of $11,000. Um, and that's just what I could find. There's probably more. And this later, latest breach is probably going to have its own set of fines uh, in association with all the new things that are in place from CCPA. Um, if they have any European information in there, you know, they're going to see GDPR. We talked last week about GDPR and how they're stepping up enforcement and increasing the fines. Um, but, you know, it's also time for Pennsylvania to get serious on this, too. Lincoln Financial is a Pennsylvania based company. And most of this news, um, at least last week's breach, you know, I found out through the CCPA reporting process. It wasn't Pennsylvania's process of reporting a breach. It was the California's uh, CCPA process. So it is absolutely time, you know, for Pennsylvania to, you know, get on this. But more importantly, it's time for the federal government to really make a blanket of, you know, what is a breach notification template? What are the minimums? Um, and kind of set this up because, Almost every business today is interstate commerce. You know, I know very few companies that just focus on Pennsylvania and what's going on in their home state. Almost everyone's doing business across state lines. So it does fall under interstate commerce in my mind, but states have a right to protect their citizens, protect their, you know, their residents. And so these privacy laws like CCPA are only going to get strengthened over time. On the business community, the enterprise community, the small business community, it's time to look at security and take security seriously. It's going to come. You're going to run into a position that, you know, a breach may happen, but it's just, it's time. Um, you know, as everyone's kind of rethinking what is going on in the world, uh, looking at, you know, the stay at home orders and everything else. And I know that doesn't apply to, you know, everybody the same, but now is a great time for so many businesses, you know, to take that in-depth look of what your security is. So 
that is what I have for you guys today. Uh, again, it is April 20th, 2020, and I am Scott Davis from TechWise Group. Thank you for watching.